Hello. This video demonstrates one way to use MATLAB with ANSYS Fluent to create a moving boundary UDF for use with the dynamic mesh capabilities in Fluent. To do this, I create a membrane pump using the MATLAB logo, as shown here. The pump works as follows. Here's an overhead view. As you can see, there are three rectangular regions underneath the membrane in the plane below. We're going to use these three in different ways. This rectangle is going to serve as a pressure inlet, and this rectangle is going to serve as a pressure outlet. The rectangle in between, underneath here, is going to serve as a wall. The pressure inlet and the pressure outlet are activated through events written into the dynamic mesh settings in Fluent, so that when each is not active, it is serving as a solid wall. So the pump in action will look like this. Note that though the motion is essentially one-dimensional, I will develop this as a three-dimensional problem and include the x and y coordinates in the UDF for generality. The MATLAB function that writes the UDF can write a fully general 3D motion. All the MATLAB files and an ANSYS project that shows this demonstration are available in the link found in the description. Before we get into the demonstration, let's look at some of the solution. This is uh, the solution found by Fluent and examined at CFD post. The contour on the inlet shows the z-direction velocity, so it's positive throughout the intake. The contour on the outlet also shows the z-direction velocity, so it's mostly negative, but does show an area of backflow over here um, in the separated flow area around this corner. You can see that an event is triggered once the membrane reaches its minimum, which changes what was the pressure outlet to a wall and what was this wall into a uh, pressure inlet. So this is uh, the second cycle. Basically it's filling right now and we get this nice vortex or swirling area here while the membrane grows and um, when it reaches its peak we get another event triggered and all that swirling area is uh, basically pushed out as the streamlines straighten more to a um, outflow. Okay, now that we understand the problem, we could discuss how to solve it with MATLAB and ANSYS Fluent. The first thing we need to do is create the geometry in MATLAB. I will use this script, which is included in the folder linked to in the video description. I'm using the built-in membrane function to get the basic geometry for this example. And I'm going to use a coarse enough grid, 7x7, seven seven, that this example can be recreated with the limitations imposed by the student version of Fluent. So this code creates the membrane and the plane beneath it and then joins them as a closed surface. Some of this code here reorders a few of the triangles at the corners to ensure that the surface is closed. So we'll run the first part of this and the output looks like this. As you can see, the membrane has been triangulated, and the nodes that Fluent will use are shown as red stars at the triangle vertices. Once the geometry is created, the next part of the code down here writes it to an SDL file. You can see it'll appear over here when I finish this. So it writes it, and it's called MATLAB Membrane 7 by 7 Okay, now that we have our STL file created, we start a new instance of Fluent, and double-click here to open up SpaceClaim. When SpaceClaim opens up, we go to Assembly, File, we want to load that STL file that was written in MATLAB. You see it right here. So this created the same geometry that we saw in MATLAB, but now it's in SpaceClaim. As I mentioned before, this is a very coarse uh, mesh so that it can work with the student version of Fluent. Before we do anything else, we want to convert this into a solid. We right click here, 
do not mark faces, and this gives us a solid. Now we have to take care of these bottom faces or we won't be able to save it in the student version, which limits you to 300 faces. To do that, we repair merge faces. You've got to be sure to select only the visible, or it will pick out the faces on the membrane itself. We want to merge all those. So merge those. That will be our outlet. Merge these. That will be our inlet. And merge these. This will be our wall. With that done, we now have our geometry that's ready to mesh. Okay, with our geometry created, we import this into the mesher. And the key feature I'll go over here is that we want to be able to retain the positions of the nodes as assigned by MATLAB, because those are our starting positions for the motion that we're going to create in MATLAB. In order to do that, when we import our mesh, we create an edge sizing. We select all these edges but not these two edges. And we assign that right here and go by number of divisions for the type, number of divisions one, and make sure the behavior is hard. And in this example I also did some body sizing and um, assigned a method and some face sizing for these under here. Those aren't as important for the lesson, which is that this edge sizing has to be one as shown so that we get the nodes as written in MATLAB. We can check this out by creating a worksheet, which is shown down here, where we look at the face as a name selection, which I've called Moving Wall, and then we convert it to a mesh node, and we see that indeed these nodes are the ones that are assigned by MATLAB. Now notice that I did choose here a quadratic method. That's okay because even though we want only the nodes on the vertices of the triangles, you'll notice that the quadratic puts a floating node halfway between. Those don't get node numbers in the ANSYS uh, Fluent Solver, and so they aren't important. You can use quadratic or linear elements for this. I use quadratic for this example. Okay, with the mesh created and imported into Fluent, we're ready for the first stage first thing to do is to compile the included getNodes3d.c UDF, which has already been done, and then to assign it under the Dynamic Mesh tab as the Mesh Motion UDF for our user-defined moving wall. That's this membrane that I've called the moving wall. Okay, What that does is it exports the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each node, so node X, node Y, node Z, and also the node ID number. We need those node ID numbers so that we can use them in MATLAB to create the mesh motion. So in order to get those exported, I'll initialize, and then before doing a run, we'll start a transcript. Put it in the correct folder, And we'll call it output dot out. You can see that started here. And then we'll run this. I only run it for three and three so that we can get each of those nodes exported into that transcript file. So that runs pretty quickly because there's not actually any mesh motion, it's just exporting. Once that's complete, we go in here and stop the transcript, and that should have created in our folder output, and there it is. Once we have our output file, which was created by running the getNodes 3D UDF on the moving wall as its uh, grid motion definition, then we're ready to use that as input into MATLAB 
to create the rest of the files needed to run the ultimate simulation. So we come back to this, which is included in the folder, and we go through, and here I have commented out the part that writes the STL file to space claim because we don't really need it. This section simply um, defines how the membrane moves, which you saw at the beginning of the video. And then we pass this output file to this read get nodes 3D, which is also included. And what it's going to do is create a new file called membrane 7x7400. And that passes to write node chords, which is also included right here. And that goes through and defines the node trajectories, which is a result of this code up here. And then writes that also to the file, write node trajectories. So initializing that and doing that, we see that this goes through. And what it does is create that this data file. Now this data file has at the top all the node ID numbers defined in it. And then when we get down here, it has the coordinates of each of those nodes. Now these coordinates are actually trajectories. So the first spot in the coordinate locations here is where this node starts. This is X, Y, and Z. And then this is where it goes to next, X, Y, and Z. And then this is where it goes to next, X, Y, and Z, and so on for each node. You can look at that in more detail because it's all included in the file linked to in the video description. With the creation of that file previously, um, membrane 7x7400, we're ready to do the final um, tasks necessary to finish the simulation. So what we need to do is switch out our UDF for the um, dynamic mesh to be this move by file membrane. That's also included. So what this move by file membrane does is it goes through and reads that data file that we wrote previously, as you can see right here, stores all of that information in RAM. And it also has a definition here um, of our grid motion. And this goes through and looks for um, the coordinate based on the node number that the fluent passes in. So that's going to control all of our motion. To make sure that that works, we got this, set, this mesh motion set to the move by file, and we want to load that data into RAM. So we do that by executing this. That loads all of that information of the node motion into RAM, and then with that, we're ready to simulate. I hope this video has been instructive. Please leave a comment if there's any questions or any feedback. Thank you.